Um, this is uh, the the historical perspective of cholera in Zambia, and we had the first cholera case in 1977, which is about 40 years, more than 40 years ago. And uh, since then, it has been uh, um, endemic in the country, but we had the major challenges in 1990 when we had the highest, uh, the highest peak. Apparently, it also coincided with the change of government because we had a different government all this long, and then we had a new government coming in with a new party, and it went on with cholera all the way until it was removed in the last uh, 2011. Sorry, I shouldn't be political here. <laughs> so um, these are some of the cholera hotspots, and the first, hot, uh, the first cholera case that happened in 1977 came from... Um, Uh, the, the, the top part there on the northern side of Zambia. Uh, I hope this one will work. Okay, yeah, there. So uh, this is the northern part of Zambia, and we are bordering with the DRC, and DRC comes all the way through into Zambia, almost cutting it into half. Then there is uh, Tanzania this side and Malawi this side. Then we have Zimbabwe on the other side, and... Uh, you know, it is a landlocked country, and three of our neighbors have got cholera endemic in them. And therefore, the issue of uh, uh, regional collaboration is one which we haven't even discussed about. How do we address challenges that are affecting our neighbors as we are surrounded by countries that are also affected by cholera? We can control it in Zambia but we still are under threat from importing from the neighboring countries. So how do we uh, collaborate? We, Zambia is, uh, um, have got an opportunity because we, uh, we host the Regional Collaborating Center for Africa CDC, and we can use that platform to ensure that we encourage uh, collaboration. So the 10 hotspots, some of them are up there, and there are big lakes around here, and these are fishing camps. We have the blue ones, actually, when you look at this. This is where the cholera, and then there is cholera and typhoid on the green. So Lusaka, the central area here, and the southern part of Zambia, and the central part. All of them have got similar features. They are all water bodies around them, and then the, except for Lusaka, which is as a result of congestion and urbanization with a lot of slums. Um, a brief background, we will talk about this later, it's not very important, but uh, we learned lessons from the outbreaks that we had last year because we have always operated from the nine, 40 years ago, we have been working only responding to an outbreak when it occurs, and we never had a strategy or a, a, a strategic plan on how we are going to prevent these outbreaks from happening. So as my Nigerian counterpart said, when you have an outbreak, everybody is excited and a lot of things happening. The moment the outbreak goes, you control it, everybody goes to sleep and we start waiting for the next outbreak. So we had now to look at the, uh, to develop the National uh, uh, Multisectoral Action Plan to see that we, we sustain the gains that we achieved during the outbreak and how we, we maintain this. Well, Dominique already talked about the three axes through which we have aimed, but our vision is a health and productive Zambian population free from cholera, and we have our objective to eliminate cholera by the year 2025. The GTFCC goes up to 2030, but our government is aiming at controlling and eliminating cholera by the year 2025. And these are the pivotal areas that we are considering uh, to, to, to move enhanced epidemiological and laboratory surveillance, universal use of safe water and basic sanitation, community engagement for uh, behavioral changes and improved hygiene, access to treatment and oral rehabilitation solutions. This is improved case management and then protection with safe and effective uh, OCV. 
So we have our planned actions. The major one is actually to address the wash in peri-urban areas. We call them slums, but these are areas that other people call homes. And we need to see how we address this. It is a very, very big challenge. And we have the local authorities, which were there to supply water, but it was for a population of about 3 million people in Lusaka, the main epicenter. But uh, at that time, no, about 300,000 people, when this water system was developed, we have not expanded it, but the population has grown to beyond 3 million people still having the same uh, size of the uh, utility company providing others. The social mobilization, risky communication, and all that which goes with it. But now the Minister of Health has taken by the bull by its horn by implementing what we call health in all policies. And this has been, uh, uh, it has been adopted by Cabinet of Zambia uh, with the head of state being in charge making sure that all the other companies, I mean, uh, sectors, they put, they embed health in all the policies that they, they implement. So we are looking at the targets and approaches. Um, coordinated multi-sectoral approach. We have the OCV, and we have to, major aim is 100% reduction in cholera deaths. And then we look at the elimination of cholera in, by the year 2025. And this is where WASH is embedded. How do we plan to achieve those targets? The first one, we looked at leadership and coordination. And if we do not have involvement of the leadership at the highest level, we may not achieve what our targets are. And so here, what we have done with our national uh, cholera plan, we have made it to sit in the vice president's office. And she is the one who is, or the vice president is the one who uh, uh, reports directly to the president and coordinates the implementation of this uh, national cholera elimination plan. That's the governance structure which is there. Under the vice president, there, are there is a committee of ministers, four of the ministries that are directly responsible with the WASH and the cholera control. That is the Minister of Health, the Ministry of uh, uh, Local Government, the Ministry of Water and Sanitation, and the Ministry of Infrastructure Development. So all these, they have got each minister is sitting on this committee of ministers, and they are reporting to the vice president. And the vice president now uh, mentions to the, I mean, uh, reports to, to the president. Under this, there is a technical group, now a technical committee, which is composed of permanent secretaries of these ministries I've mentioned, and the, uh, the directors responsible for, for, um, for implementation of this strategy. And with that coordination mechanism, we see that it is going to work very well and everybody is involved and there is ownership of this national uh, cholera plan which we have developed. And uh, water and sanitation, yes, we are looking at the, to accelerate the access to safe drinking water and adequate sanitation at the base, uh, basic level on, of uh, service in all the 10 cholera hotspots. As by the way, in Zambia, we have identified 10 cholera hotspots because Zambia has 10 provinces and of the 10 provinces are subdivided in 203 districts. Now, these hotspots are actually the districts in which we, we tend to, to have cholera almost on an annual basis. And 10 of them have been identified. So those are the hotspots which, which I mentioned there. And with that, we have our strategic objectives to enhance watch surveillance, preparedness, and emergency response, and uh, provide access to <coughs> drink, uh, adequate safe drinking water, and hygiene, and access to improved sanitation. The approach we intend to use to achieve these um, targets is to enhance communication on cholera control strategies and risk, uh, uh, cholera risk. 
We look also at hygiene promotion as well as managing wash resources using community leaders because we want the, uh, uh, the community to take responsibility over their own health. Challenges, yes. Um, for the development of the National Korea Plan, we haven't had much challenges because we, we had a very strong leadership starting from the involvement of the president and the committee of ministers, and then we formed a, a, a strategic working group which developed the national plan, and now we are looking at the implementation. That's where we have a bit of challenges or worries or concerns um, with resources. There will be a lot of money that is required for this. And the fact that for us, we are looking at financing 90% of the, uh, uh, the, the financing of the plan to be generated from re, uh, local resources. And only 10% we will look to partners. So that is where we want to see how possible is it that we are going to generate 90% of the required funding to implement this Korea plan over the next five to, to, to seven years. Then the other thing which is a threat and outside our control is the availability of the OCV because we want these two items to, to, to go together. One, we do not manufacture the vaccines, so we will depend on Dominic and uh, his team, UNICEF, Gavi, to see where is the stockpile of these vaccines because we want to, uh, to, to, to vaccinate all the hotspots. And it is dependent on their goodwill. They're going to make it available for us to have these uh, vaccines. And it is very good for prevention and also in response to outbreaks who works on that. Upgrading of the slums is a lot of money that will be required for us to supply safely managed water and resources might be a bit of a challenge. So we have the implementation timeline. Thank you. Um, this is where we are at the moment. Uh, with, with the, we have done already uh, with the resolution coming up and then we, we are planning to launch our national plan, Korea Elimination Plan, uh, during the course of this year, from this period to 2019. And we are targeting April as the, the month that we plan to do a national launch of this plan. But we are also looking at the sustainability. How do we ensure that beyond uh, controlling or beyond co uh, uh, controlling the epidemics, how do we ensure that we sustain the gains? And we want to look at the focal point persons for each of the line ministries, and we will do all those uh, issues. Then 2020 to 2022, we'll be working on those other items. So basically, the funding, that's the budget we are looking at. So we are a bit timid because our, we are looking at 56 million to finance the National Corridor Plan. And $56 million is quite little money, but when it, if it is to be generated locally from local resources, uh, domestic resources, it might be quite a mammoth task. So we were a little bit timid in our planning, but if we have some other uh, you know, partners coming in to finance, we can be a bit ambitious and go to more than 100, like uh, Nigeria is or Congo DR. So I thought we were the most timid, but when I saw Malawi's plan is just about five million, I said, ah, so we are a little bit better. Well, so basically that's uh, what we have, and uh, that's where we are as Zambia. Thank you. Thank you very much.